Hey there, Apocaloso here, and today I'm gonna talk about a cartoon I did back in 2015 called Little Barber Shop of Horrors. Basically, it's the story of a kid who finally confronts himself with the length of his wild hair, and he decides to change his look, but then he'll struggle to find a barber that can actually cut his hair in the style that he's asking for. And so he goes on a long search looking for the perfect barber. This was my student animated short when I was studying animation in Milan. It took me almost two years to be completed, starting from the basic idea and concept, going through the final production stages. And even if it took so long to be completed, it doesn't really mean it's a hell of a short, but I did invest much time on it, trying to learn how to animate and seeing if I could communicate without using any words and hoping viewers will relate to the character. Um, when I did finish Barbershop, I spent one full year sending it to festivals and sometimes things went pretty well, people enjoyed the short and eventually when I did release it on YouTube, the response was good as well. And this was really pleasing, especially considering that during the production some people weren't so sure about the cartoon, they thought the animation wasn't good enough, they didn't like the art style, they didn't understand the ending, like he didn't make any point. Obviously this made me question myself so many times, I started feeling unsure whether the decision I was making were right or wrong, uh, but like I said, in the end it turned out not being the steaming pile of crap that the city would be. It's not perfect, but I'm happy with it, so um, what I'm gonna show you is a comparison between the storyboard and the final work. I think it's interesting to, um, to see how the vision started and how it ended up to be. Also, I just wanted to point out that I edited the storyboard in a different way than it was originally conceived because the timing was completely different. But I needed to do it if I wanted to compare the two pieces. Also while you watch it, I'll be here commenting and giving you some insight and pointless details about the short and so hope you like it and thank you for watching! So the first thing I want to say is that in most of the backgrounds you will find some easter eggs so look around for posters, objects, signs, whatever usually it's a reference to something or maybe just a tiny little joke and here if you pause the video you will find more or less this kind of stuff like here with the posters on the wall those are real album covers from bands like Primus, Devo and Mr. Bungle this was the first animation I did for the short and you can probably see it because it's way sharper and articulated than what you're gonna see next. That's because I started animating meticulously, trying to be precise, but then the clock was ticking and I needed to go faster if I wanted to finish the short on time and the risk was pretty high. Since the beginning, one of my teachers used to say, you're not gonna finish this. Uh, very encouraging, right? <laughs> but also, I have to admit that, as you can see, I'm not really good at drawing. I kind of have my style and all, but still it's hard for me to draw on model. Respect volumes, I don't know jack shit about anatomy, I need a lot of time to nail things. And here in these shorts sometimes I was having a really hard time making really simple poses. I knew how I wanted to animate them, but I couldn't fucking draw as I wanted. I thought that something that could help to get away with it was the fact that I was going for a uh, Hurley Simpson style, like the one you would see on the Tracy Ullman bumpers from 1987. I was really inspired by that. I like that some of those look weird and unprecise. And so I said, that's why it looks like shit, because that's what I'm going for, but not quite. So I can tell how the idea of barbershop came out. Basically, when I started school, I wanted to do a short that could be more, let's say, accessible than what I was usually doing. I like nonsense, surreal shit, provocative humor, you know, 
but it, it's not the only thing that I enjoy to tell. And since here I knew I had to work a lot on this project, I wanted to find a story that could, you know, a story that people could relate with. And I was hoping to find one from my personal experience and also without using any words to do something international so everybody could get it, except bold people, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, it had to be silent and even the humor had to be more inclusive or more comprehensive, if you will. So I chose to tell about my frustration of going to cut my hair and be concerned that the barber is going to mess up or simply giving me a haircut that doesn't suit me. Because I think our hair is so much, of course, connected with our personality. It definitely says something about us. And in fact, it plays a major role in presenting us to others. And when it looks off, I think it's like if we don't recognize ourselves. And here's a scene with many, many, many references from movies, cartoons, music and pop culture. I was planning to give each one a different background too, but didn't have much time to do it and it didn't work very well even when I tried just changing the colors of that empty room. Anyway, Joe, who is the kid, the, the protagonist of this cartoon, is not really worried about what people would think of him after a bad haircut. He's, he's sad because he's not getting what he wants. And that happened to me many times. Usually I show to the barber a picture of myself with, a, with an old haircut I like, and I hope he can understand what I want. Sometimes they get it, sometimes not really, and unfortunately you can even get something so bad that makes you mad. Maybe this happened to you too, I don't know, let me know. Some friends had more or less the same experience. This evil barber looks a lot like Matt Groening on that Simpsons episode, 138 episodes spectacular, that one with Troy McClure. Honestly, I took a lot from them for this cartoon. I was looking also at Bob's Burger, Rick and Morty, and some other stuff too, even some Futurama. Those were some of the reference for the background, and I... I watched a lot of Richard Williams' lessons, I tried to use many of his tricks so I could learn how to animate, and this shirt was a good exercise. Before this I did animate something, but really without using any animation principles. Let's talk about the sound too. Um, it, it was done by Ricardo Aragoni, and he did a very good job. He did exactly what I wanted, and he came up with some ideas too. Sometimes he recorded the sound himself, if I recall correctly, and he recorded me doing the voices. I did Joe and all the barbers for sure, a crying baby, maybe, and the rest were some friends of mine from school. And the music is by Pierre Piras, a close friend of mine, and he did something like six or seven different tracks, very distinct styles and genre. You can go on my SoundCloud if you want to hear the complete and clean soundtrack of the short. There is even some stuff that we didn't use. Do you see this guy killing that man? There's a wanted sign with this picture in a previous scene, but I'm not gonna tell you where. You have to find it. Anyway, the short has come to an end. Hope you enjoy it and thanks again for watching guys, ciao ciao!